Honolulu City Council member Tyler Dos Santos Tam introduced a bill making it mandatory for bars, nightclubs, and other high risk venues to carry naloxone, also known as Narcan. He hopes it'll help prevent overdose deaths in the islands. The Department of Health reports 274 people died of an opioid, opioid overdose in 2020. And joining us now live to talk more about it is Councilmember Tyler Dos Santos Tam. Thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you for having me here. Well, Councilmember, first of all, what do you think? having Narcan at all these venues is needed. Yeah, well, you know, we see all across the mainland that uh, the fentanyl and opioid crisis is, is coming here to Hawaii, and we want to get ahead of that. We also know that alcohol and drugs don't mix, and so we're trying to f identify these high-risk locations, basically, you know, bars, nightclubs, where people might have these interactions, and want to make sure that they have this life-saving medication, uh, Narcan or Naloxone, that can s help to reverse or prevent an overdose. And how do you think these venues will react? It's going to cost them some money, right? Yeah. Well, you know, there's already been uh, some overdoses that we've heard about at different bars. And uh, we obviously, they have thought about this and want to make sure that their customers are safe. We're also hoping to work with the Department of Health to uh, help get this drug in to uh, this medication into these venues for free. And hopefully the Department of Health can help to do that. And so uh, we talked about footing the bill, but how would the owners and the employees talk about the training that would go into it with using it properly? So one of the requirements is that all the blue card holders, so this is the managers of bars and nightclubs, would have to, do, uh, would have to be trained. They, of course, have to receive other training in order to get their manager card. So we're hoping that this can be part of their regular training. Now, in terms of getting it, again, we're hoping to work with the Department of Health and the Liquor Commission to find ways to, to distribute it more easily. And knowing that there is a, a lifespan on uh, this medication, you know, they are going to have to get a new uh, dose after a year or two. And again, we're hoping to be able to work with the Department of Health, Liquor Commission, and um, work with the opioid settlement money that the state and city are going to be receiving to help pay for this. We'd like to ask you also about another subject, uh, the proposed pay raises by the Salary Commission. There's a chance you'll be getting a 64% raise from $68,000 approximately to more than $113,000. How can you justify something like that with so many people struggling here in the islands? I, I know the public uh, has a lot of questions about this, and I know at the Salary Commission hearing, there were a lot of people who spoke up on this. I think one thing that was missing from this discussion is that the city council is a full-time job, and in the past, it's been treated as a part-time job. Council members in the past have had outside employment. And I think this is another conversation that we need to have, is whether we make it a full-time job and prohibit or you know, highly restrict having this outside employment, because that creates you know, conflicts of interest. So that's, I think, the second part that we have to work on. Is everybody on the council voting for it, or what's the feel right now? You know, I, I've had a chance to hear from some of uh, my colleagues. There's a few who are against it. There are a few, you know, who are still listening to um, what their constituents have to say. So we're going to, you know, proceed cautiously and see what, um, you know, what ends up happening and, and what the ultimate recommendation is uh, among the nine members. I mean, as a public figure, I'm sure a lot of people are sending you emails yeah. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> What's the voice of the public like? You know, we, we've gotten a number of people, of course, who have said, you know, this is a, a very large pay raise. You know, it's, it's not appropriate at this time. But we also have others that say it is a full-time job, and we want to make sure that you as a council member show up at all of our neighborhood boards, are responsive to all the emails, and are working basically 24-7. And so, you know, it's, it's split, I would say, in terms of the emails and uh, calls we get into our office. And this will be decided in May? Is that right? Yeah, so it's, it'll be later this year, so I think the public still has some time to speak up, um, not only to my office, but to uh, my colleagues as well. All right, well, we really appreciate your time. Thank you no, so much for joining you. us, Council Member Tyler DeSantis-Tam.